everyone, and welcome back to Napoleon Total War with the Great War mod. We're playing as the Austro-Hungarian Empire in World War One. Last time around, most notably, we were able to take Milan, but we also had some developments in the East where Russia fell to a revolution and it's now the uh, Soviets or the Bolsheviks who are in charge. Uh, they haven't actually started changing troops yet, so they still have the old imperial uniforms. But as these go through, we'll probably be seeing uh, the actual special um, Soviet or Bolshevik troops, the revolutionary troops of Russia, will be starting to turning up. Um, hopefully, I might throw into battle with the Russians. Um, thing is, though, it won't be specific um, revolutionary troops, as they still carry the the old uniforms, so it'll take a while until we actually see any of them. But yeah, uh, I've done a few turns since last time around, because there was quite a bit of uh, movements to be made, up to the point where we could be able to do some battle. So we've got uh, Archduke Eugene, he's moving up to take control of Vilnius in Lithuania. And then he's going to move to Minsk. Uh, we also, over here, yes, what I did was I moved up uh, Hermann. Uh, and we took the Belgrade region. And what I did there was, in fact, that I uh, was able to create the white movements. So the counter-revolutionaries. So we've got uh, the Tsarists, Russians trying to restore um, restore the Tsar. However, in this case, they are a puppet state of us. And hopefully they won't fall to their own communist revolution. Um, we're gonna move further up here and we're also gonna take Smolensk before he moves off to Moscow. Uh, once Archduke has gotten to Minsk, he's gonna then switch over and go this way. And we're going to see about uh, converging at some point towards Petrograd, which is the um, the capital. However, according to the victory objections, we're actually only needing to get uh, Moscow to win. Then, if we go down here, my fleet is on the way. What I want to do is I want to clear off the now Soviet fleet here. So I can start recruiting or take these cargo ships, bring them over and get the oil supply. That will, I think, I imagine that will actually double uh, my income. Um, also, yes, with us uh, setting up the white movement, I can actually trade with them. So I gain about 600, 700 from trade. And I also get 332 from them being a vassal. Uh, my idea is actually to uh, give a lot of territory to the white movement. Um, and so we're not going to create... Um, and I, I think I think I will give areas here also to Germany. Like I could give Lithuania and Latvia and stuff like that to Germany. Um... But we'll see. And if I get all the way to Finland, I'll probably... Either I give it to Sweden, or I make it a, its own... Uh, its own... Uh, I was about to say kingdom, but it, I guess it would become a republic. Um, or maybe it would become a kingdom. Who knows? Uh, then down on the Italian front, we do have it stabilized around Milan. The thing here is there's a lot of... Um, a lot of Italian troops have been moving around here, and I imagine they have a lot of them up actually in Switzerland. So I'm a little bit um, cautious about moving these out, because if I move them out, I could very well end up in an ambush. And over here we've got Konrad von Hetzeldorf finally moving into action against a unprotected Rome. He won't be able to hold it, but will cause enough confusion that we might plummet the Italians into their own um, 
socialist or Bolshevik Soviet revolution by losing their capital they would lose enough money and that, that would cause a lot of problems um, so he's moving down he's gonna see about attacking Rome just basically sack it come down as the Huns or the uh, the uh, yeah whoever come down and sack Rome and then we have this one. Uh, I was hoping to move him by ship, because then I'd probably be able to do this within two turns. I would be able to board the ship and then launch them over here, and that would be quicker to attack Naples. However, I really want to get my navy going to uh, increase the amount of money I can make. By taking control of the uh, the oil from the uh, Caucasus region, and the reason for that is, of course, that by research and technology, we've been able to get the trench warfare doctrine, which has opened up or changed out our recruitment tree entirely. So now we all got the helmeted troops again. Uh, well, not the Kaiser Schutz and Mountain Infantry, but everyone else has now helmets. So I'm hoping that I could be able to switch a lot of these out. I think we're gonna keep the old Landwehr Reserve Battalions just because they're the new ones, the Reserve Battalions that got helmets. Now, where do we, where can I recruit them? The Landschutzen uh, Reserve Battalion with helmets, they actually have an upkeep cost, upkeep cost that is twice as much as the old ones. So these have an upkeep, upkeep cost of 204 while the old ones only have 94. I don't know how much they cost in recruitment, but uh, that's it there. So, yes, there's not many moves I can... I, I haven't actually laid up for a move right now. Oh, yes, last thing that I'm forgetting. I was moving this army, the move down to here, and I was going to actually move it up north, but then I realized, you know, Part of the victory conditions is actually that I take over the Kingdom of Romania. So he's going to move to actually attack the Romanians, and we're going to see how that goes. I am... Do I have any aircraft? I do not. I have two. So both of them, one is up here and one is in Italy. The Italian one, I wonder if... You know what? We'll speed through. I want to see what the French have. Otherwise, I could have gone up towards Switzerland and figured that out. But I want to see what the French have down here. They don't actually have that much. So that could be a push through into that. And then he can go up to Bern and take a look at Switzerland. And yes, with that said, we're going to go ahead and end turn. And we're going to see what the enemy has in store for us. We have the end of the turn, and the first thing that happens is that it seems like Romania might actually have uh, figured out what was going on. Maybe I was speaking too loud, but Romania has cancelled our trade agreement, most likely because they have declared war on us. Uh, path blocked up here, not sure why. We should definitely continue here. I wonder, he was able to attack the trade route. Wait, is there white movement? The white movement is trading with the Soviets. Great. <laughs> um, path blocked. We've got uh, cargo ships being recruited in the Black Sea. We've got a small barracks in Zagreb. More troops being able to recruit there. I actually mostly got this because it reduces administration costs in the region. We've got double tracks in Ukraine, that's good. We're gonna get a third track as well. So we can speed through in this region as fast as possible. Trained gain for one of my ministers, he got experience, so we'll take a look at those guys. Uh, the Lord of Treasury has a lot of stars, so it's a really good cabinet right now. No problems there. Romania joins my enemies. Um, so they knew before I knew, almost, that I was going to attack them. It's going to take us uh, three turns until we reach that area. I should really get some other troops to hold down this region. It's a bit expensive to get cavalry. Upkeep cost... Well, not in, f in fact, it's not... Um, 
These rifle units are the same. Hmm. Right. Um, we might then want to see about... The thing is, my troops are so far on the front line, it will take so long time to actually replenish them. That I'm wondering... If it's even going to be worth it. Also, another problem with trying to switch these out for the new ones is that these guys have experience. So, like, this guy has 61 accuracy, while, say, a, a newly recruited one has 55. Um, I don't know what... I think maybe they have more morale or something? Um, what we could do is if... I could merge units as they die out. Um, or we can go ahead and declare. I guess once we go for maybe an invasion of France, which really isn't part of the campaign. Um, but once we get that far, we could possibly um, go ahead and... Oh, you know what? I think that the easiest thing is probably to create an entirely new army that, that we can put on the front line somewhere. Um, so let's just get tons of these infantry battalions. Let's get five of them, and then plus three Feldjäger. Maybe the Tiroler Kaiser Ye Well, some of the new... I want a forward artillery observer. May you know what? I should start recruiting the new guns first, because they're going to take a long time to recruit. Can I recruit? Can recruit heavy howitzer over here. Now there, um, some of these uh, heavy field gun. I don't know about that one because you. Ca I think that one is a fixed battery, so I can't move it. But I really want to show the forward um, observer for the rail gun. So we need that one. Mountain gun would be nice, just because. It's not as effective as the field guns, so the new army could have this one just to show, this one, and uh, machine guns, they are getting nerfed, um, so they're pretty, um, and also, they're, they're pretty, but they're pretty, like, OP at this point. Uh, heavy mortars are quite inaccurate, so that could be uh, useful, well, not useful, but... It wouldn't be useful, that's the point, I guess. We could get troops from surrounding regions to add on. So we could get four Feldjägers, two from Budapest, Hungary, and two from Zagreb, and so on. Um, then the rest of the money could be spent towards actually upgrading the university up here. And then I have a thousand, we'll spend that somewhere else. This army will continue to meet the Soviets up here. And he's moving there. And Hutzeldorf is moving straight for Rome. And Freiherr is moving straight for Naples. And the navy is continuing towards the Soviet navy. And Bob's your uncle. This army is continuing over there. So I think today it's going to be the Romanians who fight. It could be the Romanians try to strike here. Um, which would be would be a good target because then my new army could move there and kill them. They could also move against these guys. But we'll see. Let's go ahead and end turn once more and see what the enemy comes up with. Finally we have arrived. Uh, the Romanians though do not go ahead and defend this region. I have actually seen Romanian troops move in the p mountain pass here, so I imagine they're actually going for Klausenberg. Um, just in case, we'll get some extra troops there. I don't know if we'll get them in time. At the same time, we're getting the new model army set together up here. We've got four units of light coming in, and we've got five normal infantry battalions. Uh, more troops are going to come in, and we're going to have a full stack ready to move from up there. Uh, I think we'll just out-resolve this one, because I have some other fights to do. 
And we occupy it. And... Okay, we cannot really leave it just yet. What we can do is this region. How many troops can I actually bring from this region? Before this becomes a problem. I guess I can bring all of them. Yes. Then all of them will be marching. There, there they are. There's the Romanians. They have suffered some winter attrition. And we're going to be able to attack them next turn. These guys are going to go in support this region, which the Romanians have put no effort into building up at all, to the point where there's not even railroads going through it. God awful. However, we got a college, which I will be able to set to work. We'll put this guy towards something more important. I'll put you on rigid airships. That'll be nice. Um, so that's done for that region. We're about ready to attack up here. At this point, I kind of feel that I probably should have picked a higher... Um, a higher difficulty. But that's a bit late now. Um, what we're going to do is we have a possibility of an attack here, but we also have an army just within range now, and that's Hutzeldorf, which have reached Italy. There is... I mean, he can definitely out-resolve this. And I think gunning down, you know, 2,000 Italian home guard with my machine guns might not be um, something <laughs> you want to show. Um, so I think we'll go ahead and out-resolve this one as well. I just want to out-save just in case. And we are victorious. I can loot it. Um, which will give me a lot of money. But I think we'll peacefully occupy it. And to actually have a proper fight here, we'll fight whatever rebels to come through out of that. And that will be a proper fight. Um, and then you are two turns away from attacking over here. So that will be fine. And now with this area completely uh, taken care of, and also when I take a look at what's going up on up here, uh, we can see that the French have a full stack here, the Swiss have actually two full stack here, and look at all the machine guns they've got. Going west, I think, is going to be a lot bigger difficulty, or there's going to be a lot more difficult to go here. Also, it seems that everyone's kind of turned on Italy, where they are at war with France, Spain, and Switzerland. So whatever troops I was afraid of the Italians going up through here, now that was when I couldn't see what was going on there. It seems that most, most of the Italian stacks have been destroyed, so it should actually enable this army to move forward and take Piedmont. Uh, although maybe we should just hold here, unless we might get attacked by the French. Which are coming down with loads of machine guns and probably experienced troops for fighting back and forth with the Germans. So what we're going to do for this episode though is we're going to attack the Soviets. It's still the old style units. They haven't been able to recruit any new ones. But I think it might be, uh, might be just as well. I should have actually attacked... Oh, they've recruited one red unit. The light and water unit is the only red guard unit they've recruited. They even have an old imperialist officer. Other, all other units are imperial. But ooh, yes, with that said, let's go ahead and fight uh, the Soviets. Given that our enemies on the Eastern Front are not really strong enough to stand up against us, I'm going to uh, storage the machine guns, and we're not going to use them for this battle. And I'm going to be very careful with how much artillery I use. 
Instead, we're gonna go for just infantry. Um, yes, with that said, let's go ahead and attack. Also, I will, of course, use use uh, my cavalry, our three lancers. We'll still bring up the artillery because I want to blow up that town. Blow up quite a few of those houses. I'm going to set them somewhere around there. Now, the enemy has... Only the general, the mortar unit, is... Um, is the Soviet one. Or the Bolshevik one. I, I think that one is actually hidden. No, it comes as a reinforcement from all the way over here. Let's see. Look at that. There they are. He's got the uh, Soviet star on his hat. And they're bringing in a mortar team. Here, co here they come. The workers' revolution. We're gonna blow this town to smithereens. Oh, it looks like they're pulling back out of the town and I guess setting up their position right here to fight us there instead. I'm not entirely sure. I'll be able to blow up the town from there anyway, so that'll be good. And my troops is moving forward. Gonna move the um, cavalry into position. And let's speed it up so that we actually get to fighting today. Seems that my artillery position or something has f gotten the artillery to actually bug out so they don't actually want to fire. I've got a pretty good position up here on the ridge. Let's move forward and open fire on those troops down there and then these two will advance through there and these will advance through here and there the fight starts we've got light infantry coming up gonna set up somewhere around the forest hopefully try and fight this fight them off the hill if not I'll send in the Lancers to take care of them. A Russian infantry walked into murderous fire and got destroyed. This one similarly is being focused on by multiple units. The enemy mortar is now opening fire. I have set my artillery actually to fire at will. So that I, the thing which happened, which happens sometimes in vanilla also, is that they they cannot break when you set them up. I'm not entirely sure why, but when you cannot, you know, reposition them again, that kind of means that they're stuck in a way, and you'll just have to wait until they unstuck themselves. Russians got the high ground on us over there. We are uh, taking a few casualties. Let's see, where's the light infantry? They need to speed up, get through that forest. We're receiving a little bit of fire from over there. The guys on the hill though did not stop to fire upon us. Or, well, not really in time. Well, this is just good. We uh, clear off a load of these Imperial troops. Give the Russians room to start recruiting the new. Oh, actually, now when they start to proper do that flank fire, they're absolutely destroying this unit. However, I've just got my light troops into position and they should be starting to uh, fire into these guys' flank. And hopefully we'll be able to defeat them. We'll kind of reposition some of these units. We'll actually reposition these two. Moving them forward. That unit on the hill is not going to move. 
It's time to deploy the Lancers. I know you can see about running up through all of these units. I was planning on um, not using the artillery as much, but it turned out that uh, the game had already that plan ahead of time before me. The enemy did actually uh, go ahead and switch position, but it was too late. Well, I think a lot of the shots were soaked up by the forest. I think it's no point in attacking that one. It's the one by the church instead that should be attacked. And then as the uh, Russian troops are falling back, we need to reposition our troops. This one's actually caught in a bad position, a very bad position in fact. Where they're uh, in fact getting slaughtered by the Imperial Infantry. Only saved by the fact that they stopped firing to reposition themselves. And you know what? It might, they might as well die, the cavalry units, because uh, we need to replace our units for the new uh, trench line units. Cavalry charging through. Damn, the Russians over there open fire. Killing loads, however, we are breaking up the Russian formations over here. Let's move to better positions to take on the enemy. The light troops. Oh, they can sit on the hill then. Go through with the rest of it. Still a pretty glorious cavalry charge. Although uh, mer very murderous in the fact that tons of the, uh, the horsemen died in the process. We'll just ride through and cause as much mayhem in the enemy units as possible. And it looks like we're actually shooting down a lot of our own troops. We're gonna get these guys forward. The light troops can stay on the hill. Battery has still not... We're still bugged out. Well, the few horsemen that are left, they can go ahead and charge that, try to charge down retreating troops. Oh, the Soviets are uh, charging? We'll respond then by our own charge. Or oh, they were charging. They just faint charges me to uh, drag me into a melee fight. Surprisingly successful. We were at actually charging the Russians. And they all broke by the overwhelming numbers of our troops. There's still... Uh, oh, there's still the... Uh, remnants of that mortar group. Let's have the regiments move forward. So what I'll do is I'll just merge these and we can see once we actually take control of this region if we can start recruiting some of the newer units there. Should be able to unless the... Uh, region actually gets, uh, if the um, barrack gets burned or something like that. So here's the actually the proper Soviet units. It's making weird sounds once you fight. 
nonsense aren't actually doing that well against these guys. Could be though because he's exhausted, but the charge bonus of the Lancers should be pretty darn powerful. <laughs> it's is this what the fight goes down to? Ride out into the forest and then charge them again. I wonder if they might, they might shoot him. We're gonna get. We need to get the infantry over here to get rid of these guys. Uh, it comes charging back. Still unable to kill this guy. Um, the Russian isn't actually even uh, returning. Oh, there he goes. Now we stabbed him. After so many tries, and now he's getting countercharged. You killed our mate. Now you're going to die. What is it? What is this fight? Oh, he's about to shoot him. But he changed his mind. Are you gonna kill the guy, or what are you guys gonna do? Are you gonna? S what are you doing? Have you def have you moved over? Have you joined the Soviets? Why aren't you killing them? They're shooting your comrades as they're marching forward. Looks like. No, he hasn't killed anyone yet. And I wonder what that sound is. Ah, uh, let's get this over with. He's not. He's not getting it. He's not getting it done. Fire it, Will. He thinks he can hide in the bush, can you? And there we go. We won over a remnants of the Imperial Army. Have de defected over to the... The Communists, or the Bol Bolsheviks. And here we go, here's the statistics of that battle. We lost 1300 men, 1339, while the enemy lost more or less everything. With only 124 surviving. Um, Imperial infantry killed. 256 out of that unit. It's all infantry because, well, the... Um, the cannons did not fire and I didn't even deploy the machine guns. The Ulaners killed about... This one only killed 23, but I imagine that's the unit that got slaughtered in the town. The others killed almost 200 each, roughly. Cavalry is gone. And we should be able to claim this town. I can liberate it as Lithuania. But that's not what we're gonna do. It's Oh, it's not even a... I can recruit rifle cavalry. We gain trains. Darling of the gun to press aggressive attack. He gained a lot of stuff. Courageous Leader, Aggressive Attacker, Darling of the Gutter Press, uh, Patriotic Sword. Um, I think it, se it seems like we're not going to face that much of a difficulty in the East anymore. However, looking over to the, um, to the West, that could be difficulty. However, I mean, we're looking at the objectives here. Um, we have almost all of them. We're missing two. We're missing main Romania and Moscow. And I think, given the fact that I probably should have gone with um, a higher difficulty, when looking back at it now, I should have gone with a higher difficulty to make it more, a lot more difficult for me. Um, we might instead want to start another campaign instead. Um, to uh, just show as much as possible of this mod. Um, but yeah. 
Uh, there's still a bit of work to be done. We need to um, get rid of most of these Soviets. And we need to fight the Romanians. So I think for next video, we're looking at an attack against the Romanian army. And then continuing on down to Bucharest. And then for... Um, it's going to be take a quite a while to get rid of all of the Soviets because I think we cannot leave the, cannot leave it half like with half of it like just take Moscow and then call it quits. We need to completely eradicate all the Soviets, and that will be the victory goal of this campaign. So uh, re removing the Romanians and completely removing uh, the Soviets and replacing them with a white movement. One thing that I need to do is I probably need to give a lot of money to them, to the white movement, and get them to declare war on the Soviets. But with that said, that would be the episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye!